Listening to your goals and dreams is our top priority at West Tennessee Bank. Benefit from our more than 100 years of experience and visit our Henderson branch today. West Tennessee Bank, focused on you. West Tennessee Bank is a division of Decatur County Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. All right, Troy, if you'll call the roll, please. Wyatt Bingham. Here. Shane Connor. Here. Norris Frank. Here. Mark Griffin. Here. Ronald Johnson. Here. And Bob Moore. Here. All right, there is a quorum presence. We'll go ahead and proceed with our meeting. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is ask for someone to approve the revised agenda with the uh, update for Heather's budget. This is why I make that motion. Mr. Ronald, I second it. All right, Troy, you want to call roll call on that, please? Dwight? Yes. Shane Connor? Yes. Norris Frank? Yes. Mark Griffin? Yes. Ronald Johnson? Yes. Bob Moore? All right, yes. All right, then we'll go on to our first thing, which is the consent agenda. This is Dwight. I make most. We approve the consent agenda. Miss Ronald, I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second that we go ahead and approve the consent agenda. Uh, Troy, if you'll do the roll call, please. Dwight Bingham? Yes. Shane Connor? Yes. Norris Frank? Yes. Mark Griffin? Yes. Ronald Johnson? Yes. Bob Moore? Yes. Okay, then that is approved. And Troy, we have down delegations. Did that gentleman get back with you? Yeah, I believe that Nathan is on, if I'm not mistaken. He's called in. Nathan, are you on the call? Nathan? Last call. <laughs> I believe, well, I, I saw somebody had called in, so that's why I thought it was him. I didn't bother. Um, there are two, two call-ins, but I assumed he was on it. Um, well, again, uh, if he calls in later, we can get him later. Okay. okay. All right, then, uh, then let's move on to number three on the agenda, which is a spotlight and celebration. And I believe we're going to have Heather helping us with that. Hey, everybody. Hi, Heather. Hey, Heather. Oh, Heather. You scared me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say about it. Is it brighter because it didn't color? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for um, the approval of the, the change to our budget. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, so you're actually, you're going to hear from me for just a little bit, but I believe all of my kids are here. So we're going to share with you, um, some good news. This was on the, the books, I guess, before all of these unusual times came about. So, um, what better time to, to, uh, share some happiness and kindness and, and good news. So I am going to try something that I haven't tried yet before. Gonna try. Uh, look, first, let me do a let me do a, a introduction. Riley Halton. Hey. Uh, Riley Halton, tell them what grade you're in. Uh, I'm in eleventh grade. I'm a junior. About senior now. About to be a senior. That makes me sad. Okay. Uh, Evan Eads. Hi. Evan Eads, what grade are you in? I'm a sophomore, but technically I could be a junior now. <laughs> Very good. All these are making me kind of sad. And Jenna Kate Perry. Hi. And what grade are you in, Jenna Kate? I'm in mean, ninth. Ninth grade. Okay, so these are three of the willing participants that we had that we will be sharing with you in these uh, uh, strange times. So I'm going to try to show a couple of pictures while they – 
while they are talking. Let's, uh, let's see if we can do this. See, I don't have a Stephen Maurice with me. So Mark can do it. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, here we go. And somebody can let me know if uh, you can you can see this. Yes, we're all getting that. I was saying. Yes, yeah. I, we can see it. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. Well, there Riley, Riley Holson, you just take it away, there, brother. Yes, ma'am. So I, I hope all of you are doing all right. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about uh, our speaker. We got to come talk at the high school, Kate Barnes. Uh, Kate Garns, she's absolutely incredible. Uh, I met her through a camp that we went to called TTI, Tennessee Teen Institute. Uh, there's one every year, so we've sent a couple people every year up until this year. And uh, we, uh, when we were there, we absolutely loved her message. It was all about positivity and being kind to one another and showing everyone, you know, you matter and, you know, just being a friend to everybody. And... Uh, we got in contact by some info that she gave us at TCI, and she came, she spoke, she was great, and we had a, some great feedback from the students. So after her presentation, she gave everybody these little cards. Her little thing was Gladiator, and it had her little info on it, and uh, her whole message was, you're Gladiator, you're strong, that kind of thing. So uh, we had some great feedback from the students. We still see these cards uh, everywhere, you know, in the bathroom. People, kids are giving them to each other. You know, it, it was one. Of, it was just great to see uh, all these kids being so positive and supporting each other. And uh, we, she also gave us some signed copies of her book, mixtape, and uh, yeah, signed. And those are going to be in the library when we get back to uh, our normal normal routine. So they're, they're in the pictures. She, uh, she gave a little presentation to just the health council, you know, talking about our ideas and, you know, just saying you guys are doing a good thing and it's a good thing that you're, that you're doing this for your peers. So, I mean, it, it was a great experience to have her come and talk and it, it, was, it was just great to have her and her message being spread to all of our students and our peers. Very good, Riley. Thank you. Good job. Hey, uh, Miss Amy. Evan. <laughs> Me. Know what these are. Okay. Um, so Heather and I just wanted to give an update on some things we've done since uh, school has <laughs> shut down. And um, we are still trying our best to feed the community and so here's a few pictures um we've had two big food distributions we did one at the end of march and then first the beginning of april uh, in march we saw a little over 200 cars come through and then the one that we did in april we had over 400 so um, yeah, we had some great volunteers. The Haltums were there and Miss Amy Woodley. And so we all worked very hard in that one. Um, and also every Monday, Heather and I have Eagle's Edge open and we give out bags of canned goods to families that come by. And so far we've handed out over, well, right at 200 bags over the last, like since we have been closed and out of school. So uh, just a little update on what we're doing to still try to connect with our families and keep them healthy and happy and in touch with everybody. So, and we've had also a lot of community support too, some donations made to us. We've bought groceries, made deliveries and that kind of thing. So hopefully on top of what the school services are doing with the lunches and then what we're providing, hopefully we're taking care of our families as best we can. So, Miss Amy. I'm sliding in the frame now? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, I am sliding in the frame now. <laughs> All right. So with this, we, this is Donuts for Dads. And this is a fun time to just go out into our local elementary school, Westchester to be specific. We went out to third grade classrooms and for the 
kids there. We love their dads to come in and eat just donuts with them, just to give them different change of scenery. So they know just when he gets school is not just, just for learning, but for fun memories and stuff. We also, for the kids that dads couldn't make it, we allowed law enforcement and local pastors just to come in and eat with them so they don't feel left out. The kid on the picture on the left, he is one of those kids. He's very shy, a little nervous, but whenever we let one of the law enforcement or pastors, whoever was with him, he seemed to brighten up a bit. He had fun, looked looked like a really nice enjoy, enjoyment for everyone. And we hope to make this another tradition, tradition so we just keep doing this forever. And we'd love to do it. Good, Good. job, Emily. Good. All right, okay. Last one. Okay, so this was the Christmas parade. Uh, our theme was throw kindness like snow. And we were trying to encourage more people to be kind and not sure to others, same words. Anyway, um, I had more fun than I thought I was with me being shy. Uh, I started out hiding in the little snow globe. And as we went on, I eventually came out and it was kind of out of my comfort zone, but it was really fun. Good job, yeah. Kate. That was that was a lot of fun. The last thing here is just to kind of a culmination of all, well, not all, but most of the outreach that the Student Health Council has done this year. And they chose um, which ones they wanted to do. They did a, a thing for the bus drivers back in the fall. They brought them a uh, cold water and cold chocolate treats and then uh, bottom left some of them did uh participated in the uh, cafeteria appreciation which man am i glad we got that one done because those women are working um so they they uh, got a sit down meal that they did not have to prepare and they got some goodies uh we also partnered with the garden shed and donated some moms to different businesses that have helped our school system over the year. And then the last picture down at the bottom is um, we were showing appreciation to our director of schools. And he said, don't give me anything, make a donation to imagination library. And so that's what the kids did. Um, Troy might remember exactly how much that was. I don't write offhand, but. I don't um, recall, but um, yeah, that Imagination Library is a great resource for early grades, early childhood to be able to put a book in every student's hand or child's hand. We really enjoyed it when we were doing it, when our kids were that age. So um, that that is, I, I don't, if, it, if my kids are still on here, do y'all have anything else you would like to say? No, I think you about covered it all, Miss Heather. Yeah, I think y'all covered it all. You did a good job. Super, super proud of um, all of our kids. Uh, these, these three, especially because this is very strange. We had to uh, do our little, own little practice run, just like y'all did Monday night. So uh, to make sure everything worked okay. But I'm really, really proud of them. Miss Amy and I both. Um, they show up, they get it done, and uh, they spread happiness a lot. So I'm glad they got to share some of that with y'all. I want to say thank you to all of the students. I uh, think y'all are doing a great job. Heather and Amy, y'all are doing wonderful helping feed people. This is really an unusual time. And uh, I don't know, it's some strange times, but y'all are working through it and doing a great job. And students, y'all keep it up. Y'all are doing great. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any other comments? I'd like to also join in. I was just letting everybody have their turn. I do, um, um, again, thank Riley and Evan and Jenna Kate. You know, again, Riley's going to be, he's a senior now, and Evan's a, so, a junior, and Jenna Kate's now a sophomore. So, yeah, just like Bob said, this is some uncharted territory for us, and I know it's been challenging for our kids, uh, especially those who are at graduation and want to have some closure to this year. Uh, but, again, with all of the kids and all of those who are serving, like, like Heather, Amy, and uh, as you saw in the pictures, those with that second harvest who were working, 
Uh, those are some other staff members, principals, uh, people who are frequently volunteering their time to make sure that where we can help out our families, it's happening. And I know for the ones that I've talked to, the families, very, very appreciative of all the work that's being done. And of course, we'll follow up with that a little bit more toward the end of our agenda. But I just hats off to everybody for their volunteer work and for the staff who have rolled up their sleeves and done things in a non-traditional way, but still uh, are exceptional people to work with. And really, it just echoes that Chester County is a great place to work and a great place to live. Any other comments? Well, guys, we thank you all very much. You're doing a great job, students. Heather, thank you very much for getting it all together for us. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Y'all guys keep it up, and we'll let y'all bail out at this time, and we'll try to get through the rest of this meeting. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank y'all. All right. We will go on to number four, which is the uh, – PSBA policy revision. Troy, did you want to make any comment on that? Yes, uh, the uh, policy revisions, again, like what your agenda read, these are from TSBA in response to what we're having to live through right now with this school closure and how we deal with our employees. Of course, again, you know, because you were kept in communication that we have continued to budget funds to continue to pay all of our full-time and part-time employees. And uh, with that being said, uh, we do have a policy that was policy 1.8011 that deals with emergency, emergency closings, but we added, or the TSBA recommended these additions to that policy. You have a policy you have copies in your board packet that reflect what we currently have and what the new recommendation is. And then in addition to that, there's also an administrative procedure since it's new and it focuses on what's considered essential uh, employees. Uh, but these will be added to our employee handbook uh, for the procedures, but we recommend the uh, the uh, policy acceptance from the TSBA for 1.8011 and also the new one, which is now a common term, telework, where we're working from home. And again, we've been able to accomplish that. I can tell you with experience that all of our schools, faculty, staff are, are participating in different formats similar to what we're doing here for Zoom meetings or Google meeting hangouts. They're talking about plans for next year. They're also having well checks where they're checking up on their kids. They're having group chats with their students just to check up with them, um, find out if there's any specific needs and uh, just touch base with them. You know, again, all of us miss the students. We miss seeing our staff and uh, we are doing a whole lot of work now. It's a, it's a new, it's a new world that we're living in. And unfortunately it may be uh, more of a ongoing practice than just the exception is what we're going through right now. But uh, those policies we recommend that the uh, TSBA recommendations are approved. This is Dwight. I make a motion we approve those policies. This is Norris. I second it. All right. We have a motion and a second that we approve the policies recommended by TSBA. Uh, Troy, if you would, well, oh, first off, any other discussion? All right. If not, Troy, will you do the roll call vote, please? And just to be clear, are we doing a roll call vote for all of these policies from the TSBA at once? Yes. 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 Okay. Do them all once. Okay. Yes, sir. Dwight Bingham? Yes. Shane Connor? Yes. Norris Frank? Yes. Mark Griffin? Yes. Ronald Johnson? Yes. Bob Moore? Yes. 
All right, then that will be approved. And we will go on. The next thing is going to be the resolution. And my understanding on this, this is just temporary so that we don't have to change all of our policies. But we'll go with this resolution until things are kind of back to normal. And then we don't have to delete policies and reinstate them. Is that correct, Troy? Yes, sir. The, the State Board of Education made these revisions last week with impact just the 1920 year rather than us having to go in and adjust all of our policies that are in conflict now with how the state board rules read for this current year they recommended that this resolution be passed i've got the original copy with me all of the board members have a uh, an extra copy of that resolution but it's where if it's approved uh, Bob will sign it and I will sign it, but there needs to be board action also reflected in the minutes. This is Shane. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the resolution that TSBA crafted. This is Norris. I second it. All right. We have a motion and a second that we approve the resolution. Any other discussion? If not, Troy, will you call roll, please? Dwight Bingham? Yes. Shane Connor. Yes. <laughs> North Frank. Yes. Mark Griffin. Yes. Ronald Johnson. Yes. Bob Moore. Yes. Okay, then that resolution will be enacted. Troy, me and you will sign that after our meeting. Yes, sir. We'll send that in. All right, the next thing on our agenda is going to be a, a recommendation for board policy revision and Troy, I believe you said that was something from Thomas is that am I correct yes sir that's correct Thomas has gone through Thomas and Stacy especially Stacy Keene Thomas Leach and Stacy Keene have attended several webinars that have been sp sponsored by um, uh, the my benefits channel the five points that we work with that provides the support there and because of of the training that they've received we reflected upon section five of our policy manual which deals with personnel and his recommendation regarding how the language is now that you're hearing communicated among uh offices especially with employees about being tested for uh, any virus possibility um, and how to deal with those who are quarantining themselves. This section 5.400 personal health examinations and communicable diseases. We already had that policy there and it's reflected in your packet. The second page is just what Thomas Leach recommended as additions to and revisions to what we already have. He's on the call if anybody has a question for him. Troy, basically what this does, it expands the superintendent's responsibilities and gives him more jurisdiction to make decisions. And also in the policy, it always says if uh, teachers are in danger to students, but you know, there might be other times that they could be in danger to other staff members. So we've kind of uh, added that language for more protection, you know, for our district employees. And I would say on behalf of Thomas, uh, we did vet this with uh, Chris Hayden, our board attorney, and he approved the recommendations. This is Norris Frank. I make a motion that we approve this policy revision. This is Ronald. I'll second it. All right. We have a motion and a second that we approve this revision. Any other discussion? All right, Troy, do you want to take the roll call, please? Dwight Bingham? Yes. Shane Connor? Yes. Norris Frank? Yes. Mark Griffin? Yes. Ronald Johnson? Yes. Bob Moore? Yes. <clears throat> All right, then we will change that policy. Uh, we're going as with the updates, uh, 
Then we will go on to, uh, let's see. Oh, number okay. seven. Num was that five or six, Troy? I'm sorry. I'm looking that at was six, but we're going to number seven. Okay, next. that's going to be the siphon for our school cafeteria, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and now me and Troy had talked about this, and I just want to say that, you know, we've had a lot of people really working hard and going the extra mile. And, Troy, I'll let you kind of speak to this, but I do think it's something that we, you know, our employees deserve. Well, ever since we began this process, again, of feeding our families, uh, many of you I know, and I just see Mark pop up. Mark comes by every Tuesday and Friday to pick up a load of food products for kids at a daycare center. And Britt Eads, I want to say hats off to Britt. Um, he carries food to families who are shut in during the Tuesday Fridays. And some of those distributions are quite heavy when one location alone has 11 kids that are serviced in one location. Um, I want to say also, I think Stephanie Lawler is on for the call. I believe she is. But people like uh, the principals that you saw in a previous picture of Heather, uh, Amy Woolley, uh, Angela Haltom. Um, I shouldn't have started naming people. Kim Scott, staff at East Chester, staff at the junior high, staff at the middle school, staff at West Chester. Uh, I want to say also for Susan Brown and her husband, Bruce, have had frequent times. Patsy Doyle, Mike Doyle, uh, staff at the high school, Ginger McPherson, uh, David Willis from East Chester. I mean, there is just, I can just continue to name off all these people who have volunteered their time. And again, this is above and beyond. These are the volunteers. But our cafeteria staff are getting there early in the mornings. In some cases, having to get the day before when the meals or food products are being distributed to the schools so they can be prepared. But I asked Stephanie earlier today, on the average, how many children are being provided meals? She said on the average, 750 at each distribution. Ooh. Now, to give you guys a perspective of how many meals those are, you're getting on Tuesdays three days worth of meals and on Friday four days worth of meals. So you're talking about on the average anywhere between 2,700 to over 3,000 meals every week. What what are they fixed, Troy? For what? Stephanie, are you on? I know Stacy's on. She well, I can tell from experience they have a they have a breakfast meal. And again, they have a lunch meal. They have the drinks, which would be milk or juice or a combination of both. They have a hot meal also that's prepared. I think this last Tuesday was like chicken tenders, uh, green beans, mashed potatoes, rolls. I mean, it's a regular right. meal that you right. have. And that's, this is happening every Tuesday, every Friday since we began, and will continue through May the 15th since schools have been closed. But on the high side, they have served as many as 860 children in one setting. So, again, I cannot speak enough to sing the praises of Stephanie Lawler and her leadership and the cafeteria managers and the cafeteria staff who from the very inception of this plan have committed themselves to make sure that our kids in the community are well fed. This, this is Mr. White, I make a motion we approve the stipend and the funding of it. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, is there any way that we can make that retroactive, go back to maybe March the 15th when the program actually started? I think that's it the is, that, 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 that The funding, I mean, what we put into the agenda was for all days that they served. So okay. it would be retroactive to the first day that, they, that we served meals on the Tuesday or the Friday. Good. Thank you. Okay, we had a motion in a second. Any other discussions? Any other questions? 
All right, Troy, you want to do the roll call? Dwight Bingham? Yes. Shane Connor? Yes. Mark Frank? Yes. Mark Griffin? Yes. Ronald Johnson? Yes. Bob Moore? Yes. All right, then that will be approved. And I think that's great, guys, because they've really been putting in a lot of hard work, and I think they should be rewarded. Uh, we'll go on to our next thing, which is uh, recommending approval of a new custodian position. I think this is going to be because of some new buildings, new facilities. Troy, I'll let you address that and the, why the recommendation. Well, again, uh, and, and Brett is on the line, I believe. Uh, so I think uh, uh, Dwight had a question for him. So be ready to unmute yourself, Brett, if you're on. <laughs> But uh, again, based on policy 5.116, any new position, uh, you gentlemen would have to approve that position in your board packet was a job description for that. Uh, that uh, And again, because of our new baseball and softball facilities, and also we have put in just a little bit of extra time and um, effort to improve the looks of the interior of Northchester. Uh, that's been painted interior where the kids are being, uh, our, our kids and the staff are using those facilities. So we want to keep those areas along with the auditorium since we've had a new commitment to the the event, social events in the auditorium. And uh, as you've seen here, also the board office, uh, our board office in the past has just been paid for a custodian to come over the in the weekend for um, extra time to clean, but it's only been once a week. Um, and like uh, this new position would include the board office, which would be a daily cleaning so that would help us because there's been several times that we have through the work week clean when we needed to um, so it, it would be helpful to keep it looking more um, uh, keeping all the facilities looking better than uh, and keep them looking fresh and new and clean i make a motion we approve the new position and the funding of it this ron life second it all right, we have a motion a second that we do approve the new custodian position. Any other discussion? Any other questions for Brett? Uh, why don't we include Eagle's Edge in that? That has been a part of the high school when Coach Catlett or Dr. Catlett, I don't know if he's on this or not, he might attest <clears throat> to it. One of the custodians that we added over there for the new uh, East Wing when it came online Part of that custodian was two hours was coming over to Northchester, and we found two problems with that. One, Dr. Catlett had asked me this year, he's saying that the two hours he lost, uh, we were finding that it, it was really affecting the clean, cleanliness of their building, and Ms. Hoffman might can attest to that. Um, and then Northchester, only getting two hours in the morning, well, they had students that were – whether they eat in the building over there or they still use the restrooms and sometimes the messes over there and the restrooms would fall back upon the teachers over there because the custodian wasn't going to return to the next morning. Now Eagle's Edge, I probably could roll that into it. it it's, I don't know if that would be something that um, uh, they, we've been covering it with another custodian over at the high school, but I don't know if the timing of it would fall better on this one, but we could. Uh, have you decided which schedule you want to try to go with, or is that still? I did a tentative. Yeah, I did. did you all have that tentative schedule idea? Yes. I'd say the late the schedule. Video, I, could always I did a tentative schedule for Troy of how many hours. You could... Say it again, Dwight. I cut Looks like the late schedule would probably work better, wouldn't it? Start at 9. I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, but that way it would probably would. <clears throat> and that way the board office would be vacant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I think, one of the reasons. And I drew it up two different ways, and either one would work. No problem. 
Well, Brent, how often does the uh, Eagle's Edge get attended to right now? Is it a daily thing or is it a, a it, weekly? It, it, no, it's not daily. They say they at least once a week is about all I think. Is Heather all still on? Yeah. She could. I am. Uh, Coach, Coach Heath, when uh, yes, when Mr. Phillips was in, he he was supposed to go over a couple days a week, but I think it got to where it's about one day a week, maybe. Um, so I, I don't think it was something that was done as as much as it needed to be done, uh, in my opinion. Well, I appreciate that, but I, and I'll say, um, Amy and I, and, and the students that are over there, we 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 get it taken care of um, the the inside anyway. Um, anytime we have needs, uh, Dr. Catlett it is very quick to take care of them to send somebody over there if there's something that we have coming up. He he takes care of us. So you know, as far as a schedule, um, it. It's hard. It's hard to get a schedule for us because so there's some days, and Coach Eads knows too that Amy and I are both out of the office. Um, we may have you know an alumni meeting once a month, and then again we may have somebody using our building for a training, and so the it varies. It's not like a school building because our schedule is different every day. But uh, I will say between Coach Eads and Dr. Catlett, we don't have any major needs or complaints that. To, to worry about, to, to kind of help answer Dwight's question about does it needed. I think that's what you ask it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Any other comments, discussion? Will that have any effect on the uh, um, events at Auditorium, the custodial fee there, if it's being cleaned daily? Like, you know, for people like the plays don't always, for example, hire a custodian so the bathrooms aren't always stocked if there's you know if they don't hire one there's no one to stock you know so since that's being done daily anyway will that affect events as far as having a custodian at I the think they would still pay a custodial fee right yeah that's still it won't affect the events unless the big ones but it would help with the school events i have found that uh the way they used to rent it is they just shut shut the door and left and left messes, which they are cleaning up after themselves. But having a daily, this would replace that five hours that we were doing. We would no longer need the five hours because this <laughs> daily cleaning. I saw that in the theater class has been using it pretty much every day for two or three hours. And in the bathrooms, especially behind the stage on the school side, it started getting a little uh, unkempt with only five hours. So this. Yeah, they were bad them. the day I looked at them. So this would help with classes because they're I didn't know that the classes were going to be over there, too. And I mean, they're basically having classes in the auditorium. So this this will assist Coach, in keeping those areas picked up. Coach, that's going to change for next year. Uh, our plan for for the, the students to use it will be an after school activity instead of a during school day. But there'll okay. still be some. Yeah, there'll still be some use, I'm sure, to go and do some things, but it won't be quite as much as it, as it was last year. Okay. Any other discussion? Any questions? All right, Troy, do you want to do the roll call, please, sir? Yes, sir. This is Dwight Bingham. Here. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Hey, I'm going to... <laughs> Shannon Connor. Yes. Mark Frank. I almost fell out of my chair. Yes. <laughs> Mark Griffin. Yes. Ronald Johnson. Yes. Bob Moore. Yes. All right. Then that will be approved for a new position for another custodian. Uh, that is all that's on our agenda. Did the uh, Nathan Ward ever join us, Troy? Could you tell or? I'm not he? sure. Yes, Nathan's here. Okay. Okay. Uh, we understand you wanted a, a proposal for a graduation. Yeah, yeah, has it? I mean, I wasn't there for what was talked about. Has anything been discussed about it at all yet or? No. Okay. Well, and then the. Just today, the Tennessee Department of Education actually released, I don't know if Troy or anybody's seen it, the actual proposal that I was pro 
proposing. They actually they actually proposed that for stadium events for graduations. It was released today. I don't know if y'all seen that, but uh, yes, we have. And it's basically a drive. I mean, I, I'm I'm here to however y'all decide to do it. I, I'd be more than happy to to help you out in whichever way uh, that that y'all decide to do it. But the original idea was to do a drive-in graduation, kind of like you've seen people doing these drive-in churches and. They have mobile hydraulic stages and sound and FM transmitters. And, uh, you know, the kids would be six feet apart sitting in chairs in front of the stage, the saluted Victorian, valedictorian, all. Everything would be normal to the students. If you do a drive-in graduation, with the exception of there would be limited guests. In other words, you'd only be two, two, two cars per. Well, depending on where you did it, y'all could work that out, but at least that many, but. Uh, it wouldn't just be open so that anybody, you know, you couldn't have a thousand cars there. So, uh, but basically that was my proposal to do something like that. And then the kids could graduate, still walk across the stage. It would be all normal for them other than they're sitting six feet apart with the exception of, you know, they couldn't have 50 family members there. And I, I can provide all those services. Well, I, I'll just ask guys what y'all thinking, but my feeling is I, I'm not in favor of trying to go ahead on the 18th and do a graduation. No, I think we need to wait and talk about it. I do too. I'm thinking, uh, and I've talked to Troy about it. I really feel like maybe June, end of June or something, maybe July, maybe July. to see if this thing gets over with. And then we could possibly, uh, as I, what I've talked to Troy is, depending on where we can use, maybe using the football stadium. But I think we need to wait and make the decision a little later. Well, yeah, gentlemen, we do that, have another. I'm sorry, no, uh, Nathan, go ahead. No, I was like, that, that's totally up to y'all. I and mean, when, when you do it, I mean, I, you know, I, if it's where you need my assistance, you do. If you don't, you don't. But if, you, if it is, I'll be more than happy to. To work those details out, but as far as when you do it and where, of course, that's obviously y'all's decision. And, and Nathan, we appreciate the offer. I know that Nathan and I have talked on multiple occasions about this, and and again, my concern is what Nathan referred to. I've included it to there is the language just came out this afternoon. It's their guidance from the State Department. Early in it, it does say, though, that these are just recommendations that it will still be left up to the decisions with the school district, specifically right. board members and the superintendent to make the decision. But um, I know in my conversations with uh, other directors in West Tennessee, everybody that I've talked to, even though they're still on the calendar showing their current dates, their expectations, this won't be realized until later in the summer also. Well, I think, you know, as Dwight said, we can discuss it later, Is it, you know, and see how this is progressing. And, uh, Nathan, if we, you know, need assistance, if it, we do need a stage or something, you know, we maybe can work out something at that time. But I think it's going to be uh, something that's a couple months down the road as far as I'm concerned. Yes, sir. That's absolutely. This well, is not Thank you, Nathan, and I agree with, with Bob and Dwight both, but uh, thank you, Nathan, for uh, for offering, and we could use your services probably when we do have graduation. Okay. I'll, I'll just, whatever y'all decide, whenever y'all figure it out, y'all let me know, and I'll be more than happy to work with you. All right. We'll have Troy contact you, you know, as we get closer. If we do need some assistance, we'll have Mr. Kills or get in touch with you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. That pretty well is all of our agenda. Uh, we did have some updates. Uh, Troy, the main thing I guess I want to say is we are getting all the ozone treatments, and they're seemingly getting everything uh, sanitized. Again, and I would start off by saying that our – and I, is Britt still on the line? Yeah, we're, I'm still here. Um, Britt's been more active with it than I have. I was there the first day at Jack's Creek and had my only, thus far, my only conversation with those with the staff member with ENT Contracting. Um, in the conversation there, and uh, again, 
They fumigate the entire school facility. They started with the outside buildings at Jacks Creek and worked on the main campus area. They have to set it up to where it fogs. It just fills up like, as he described to me, it just kind of like an air in a balloon. You fill up all areas within the school. Uh, it is during the actual fogging or misting or, or it's not mist, it's a dry um, and it's not like, well, anyway, it's a, it's a dry, it's not a wet uh, distribution of disinfectant, it's dry. So it's safe for all electrical equipment, furniture, uh, but after a period of time, it takes some time for them to allow it to kind of aerate back out to where you can walk back in. I thought it was going to be multiple days. It ends up being just hours, um, but they've done, uh, Britt can add to it, but they've done Jack's Creek. Uh, they've done um, Westchester. They've done uh, the high school and uh, today in the junior high and today they were at the middle school. <coughs> also got Northchester done as well this afternoon. Very good. But it is more it's more it's more effective than chlorine bleach as a disinfectant. I would say this for our custodial staff, and I asked Britt this back after right before we took our spring break, because the custodial staff continued to work even though we had dismissed school on this Tuesday, the seventeenth of March. They continued to work, and based on his experience the custodial staff at every school did a very good job disinfecting the schools, taking a little bit extra time, <coughs> making sure that the campuses were as clean as possible. The equipment, the chemicals that we use for our cleaning products are hospital grade disinfectants. So it's what our hospitals in the area uses also. <coughs> this is just, again, an going above and beyond the call of what would be required. I don't know of any other school district who has done what we've done, but I hope that it reassures our community that we are very conscientious of ensuring that our buildings are safe, not only our students, but our staff to return to. Have you decided when you're gonna let the students and teachers come back in and get their personal belongings? Well, there has been some decisions being made at the school levels. Um, I know that Dr. Catlett's uh, staff, they are planning to do a distribution of returning personal belongings and giving out report cards the first weekend, the first full week in May. Um, the junior high was discussing it today. Also, East Chester is probably targeting somewhere in that neighborhood of dates. Again, uh, we probably need to be conscientious and not have everybody coming out the same day across the district and just stagger those distributions uh, to where they can go back and pick up and settle their, um, you know, some have reimbursements to come their way, some have debts to cover, some have library books to return. I mean, you know, when we were dismissing on the 17th, we were not necessarily thinking that we were going to be ending for the whole school year. So, we're having to go into to treat it like at the end of the school year closure mode. Uh, we'll be working with school cleaning for the summertime in the near future. But before all that happens, we need to make sure that all of our students and staff have got their personal belongings so they can. Um, um, anyway, we can schedule those later. So. Okay, does anybody have anything else? Anything you'd like to discuss, bring up? Uh, I do want to mention that our next board meeting will also be scheduled uh, virtually like tonight, and that will be on May the 14th at 7 p.m. It's Dwight, I make a motion, we adjourn. This is Norris, I second it. All right. I say let's not have a roll call. Just all in favor, say aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs> all right. You guys can hang up. Thanks, everybody. We got through it. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>